I'm not coming into the game. Uh, Speaking of that controversy, though, Janet Yellen, who is the newly confirmed Treasury (laughs) Secretary, allegedly received around $810,000 in speaking fees from the hedge fund that bailed out one of the primary losers in the recent GameStop frenzy. Yellen's financial disclosure shows her making $337,500 for multiple days in October of 2020 from Citadel. And I believe we have sound of Press Secretary Jen Psaki being asked about this and whether or not Janet Yellen would recuse herself. And let's play that. I had a follow-up on the the markets and everything that's Mm -hmm. happening with GameStop. Uh, You did mention, I believe, yesterday um, that the Treasury Secretary is monitoring the situation and she's kind of uh, on top of it. There have been um, some kind of concerns about her uh, previous engagements with Citadel and speaking fees that she has received from Citadel. Are there any plans to have her recuse herself from advising the president on uh, GameStop and the whole Robin Hood situation? Well, just to be clear, what I said was that we have the Treasury Secretary is now confirmed. Obviously, we have a broad economic team. Uh, The SEC put out a statement uh, yesterday that I referred to, but I don't think I have anything more for you on it other than to say, separate from the GameStop issue, the Secretary of Treasury is one of the world-renowned experts on markets, on the economy. Uh, it would, shouldn't be a surprise to anyone she was uh, paid to uh, give her perspective and advice before she came into office. Pay to, from, pay to play. Pay to she's play. from the Obama school of just talking and talking and talking, but not really seeing Right. Anything. You know, Yellen, Yellen was also against increasing the minimum wage before she was for increasing the minimum wage. This isn't uh, the first... And it won't be the last uh, conflict of interest that she's going to find herself in. And I believe that Citadel is not the radio company, the bust out radio company that uh, that is. Uh, I don't think they have three hundred and thirty thousand to pay anybody. And no offense to uh, Jen Psaki, but I don't think anyone carries the same amount of weight with the word expert anymore. She can thank Dr. Fauci for that. Yeah. So 774 says, one is named Yellen, another of his appointees is named Blinken, and all the while Joe is drooling. <laughs> Yellen and Blinken, it sounds like they are, these are some of the reindeers that Rudolph used to uh, go with in the, uh, on Christmas Eve. I'm always, I'm always suspicious of these huge speaking fees that they get paid just because, I mean, would you really be that wowed if Janet Yellen came out and spoke to you for 20 minutes? How about Hillary Clinton? How about about all the money Hillary Clinton made? And didn't Obama once say at a certain point, I mean, you've made enough money. Right. And she's, she's 72. How much money does she need at this point? I think that people are going to be outraged if she doesn't recuse herself. And wow. I mean, talk about uh, baptism by fire. This is like what her fourth day on the job and this happens. It's going to be pretty interesting to watch. Yes, I agree. Howie, I also wanted to talk about, I I know I played this earlier in my show, but I I think you'd really appreciate it. I know that yesterday you spoke about John Kerry and how he is basically telling people to learn to code. He's telling people that they can make better choices and they can said, solar panels. As I said, how come these these coal miners in in West Virginia can't figure out that it's it's better to be a gigolo (laughs) and marry somebody who's older than you? but is worth a billion dollars. That's better than going down into the coal mines every day. How come they can't figure that out? John Kerry put it uh, two and two together pretty early. Yeah. Well, we can't all be as, you know, bright as John Kerry, Michael Mann from, he's a climate activist. He was on with Willie Geist and he has another idea, not just solar panels, but he has another job. He thinks fossil fuel workers could maybe go to once they're put out of business. This is uh, Michael Mann. Sorry, I don't have that. Okay, we don't have that one. But okay. Grace, Grace, I got, I got a couple of questions yesterday uh, from people. Say, does John Kerry still own the Flying Squirrel? He does. He does. Yes, he does it's indeed. The Flying Squirrel LLC. Yes, a limited liability corporation. In other words, it's uh, it's still there. It is a Gulfstream aerospace aircraft, and uh, it's uh, it's licensed with the uh, Federal Aviation Administration until October of 2023. And I'm sure at that point it'll be retired because he really believes in walking the walk in addition to talking the talk. 
Oh, yeah. Just ask the people who made his boat in Rhode Island. <laughs> All right. This is Michael Mann. Oh, okay. I also like is the idea of hiring a uh, sort of civilian climate corps, um, which is in the plan, to provide jobs to those people who would otherwise be displaced by this transition. A civilian climate corps. They, of course, the Civilian Conservation Corps from the New Deal, and they put uh, unemployed people, men, to work in these camps. And sometimes they had them write, actually write books. And there's there's some old, uh, I guess that was the WPA, the Works Project Administration. So so they're, they're going to give up good, uh, I mean, again, I wouldn't want to be in a coal mine, but these are union jobs mostly. They pay pretty well. And they're going right. to replace them with, the C, with a CCC, a new CCC. No, I know. It's it's absolutely insane. And the fact that they say it and then John Kerry actually says, oh, no one's more concerned about your jobs than Joe Biden and John Kerry. Like, oh, yeah, I'm sure the people who just lost their jobs and got their pink slips believe that. Uh, Grace's News is brought to you by Toyota of Portsmouth, the house of value. I absolutely love my new RAV4 XLE that I got at Toyota of Portsmouth, especially now, Howie, the roads are getting a little bit icier and it's getting chillier. And I just love having a great, secure car that I can drive. Toyota of Portsmouth has a huge, sparkling, clean showroom and an incredible staff. They are located just south of the Portsmouth traffic circle off 95. Go to toyotaofportsmouth.com or visit them at the showroom and tell them Grace sent you. So Howie always keeps you guys up to date with Governor Charlie Baker and his flawed vaccine rollout. But I think the big news of today was Andrew Cuomo. Howie, were you as shocked as I was that they actually came out with the report that shows just how much he was undercounting the deaths in the nursing homes? Well, we, we all knew that that was the case. You know, they uh, it, it wasn't just Republicans in New York State that were going after him. The Democrats, uh, at, the, at the behest of Janice Dean, among others, ha- held hearings on the deaths in the nursing homes. And uh, they brought in, uh, I think they subpoenaed uh, Cuomo's uh, hacks to testify, and they refused to come in. And uh, right. so we, we knew this was only a matter of time. I, I just didn't know it was going to be, like you said earlier, o- over 50 percent. And so Charlie Parker's got to be saying, hey, can we update those stats saying that I that Massachusetts is the number one state for nursing home deaths? I, we're only number two. And I think the way they undercounted it, Howie, when you really get deeper into the article is that's the shadiest part is that they weren't counting people. So you got sick at a nursing home. They sent you to the hospital and you died. And they were saying, oh, no, that's not a nursing home death. Because, like, technically you weren't in the nursing home when you died. And again, every, everybody remember that they have emails. This is not somebody saying, I think I sent an email or I sent a letter. They have emails of at least one nursing home administrator in Brooklyn begging Cuomo's administration not to send the COVID-19 positive patients back to the nursing homes because it was going to kill people. And now it turns out it's killed. They say if you extrapolate the numbers from what they checked, it killed over 5,000 people. And I think part of it that is so insulting is that Trump sent those two massive ships full of hospital beds. There was no shortage of space for people. And he just didn't use any of it. He sent them back into the nursing homes. And the Javits Center, too. Yeah, the it's, Javits it's, Center, right, right in Midtown. They, they, in addition to the hospital ship on the uh, Hudson River, and they didn't, they didn't use any of it. And Eddie, and the, and remember, oh, I don't have enough ventilators. People is gonna die because the, we don't got no ventilators. Then they sent him the ventilators, and he ended up sh- shipping them out to other states because he didn't use any of them either. And I really wonder sometimes with him when he goes on these shows and he says things, it, he lacks any self-awareness. But when he puts his head on his pillow, does he really think he did a good job? Like, I know he wrote the book and he went on the book tour. But deep down, do you think he knows how much he screwed over New Yorkers? I think he does. You do? Oh, that makes me happy. How hey, hey, you know another thing, too, Grace? What? You know, they, we don't have enough hospital beds. <laughs> We're going to be screwed with that. We don't have no hospital beds. Since he became governor of New York many all those many years ago, they have 20% fewer hospital beds in the Empire State. Oh, it's almost but, like they were But Trump prepared. did. That's Trump, Trump's fault. It's all Trump's fault. Trump made, you know, Trump Trump was involved in GameStop, you know. Oh, he was. Yes. I well, I was actually thinking that, you know, that on yeah. the Reddit thread there's someone named like DJT145 and it's Donald and, you know, Trump. 
And you know, you know what I also, I also heard Grace. What? He ran a stop sign today in Palm <gasps> Beach. Stop. He didn't come to a complete stop. I knew what I heard. There's a storm coming to New York City <laughs> over the weekend, Howie. You know who's responsible for that? Absolutely. Orange Trump did it. Bad. Hey, it's Howie, climate way, change. Before I leave you, I have a question. Did you see the story about PETA, how they're telling people now not to call? Um, they're, they're saying they don't want humans to denounce other humans with animal names. Like, you know, you call someone a chicken or a pig. Yeah. Or you say that person's lazy like a sloth. You call them an ass. Yeah, or you say, or you call someone a cow if you're really mean. Um, Calling someone an animal as an insult reinforces the myth that humans are superior to other animals and justified in violating them. Some of the responses to this tweet, Howie, were amazing. People were like, uh, congratulations on the stupidest tweet of 2021, and it's only been four weeks. (laughs) And another person said, I can't tell if this is real, or are you guys making fun of yourselves? You know, I just thought of something. I mentioned him yesterday with my column about Ayanna Presley and how she wants to let go all the fat prisoners. Yeah. And I mentioned a guy, a legendary Rhode Island fence from Providence, Alfred Rossi. You know what his nickname was? What? The blind pig. So not only was it an animal name, it was a disabled animal name. Well, Howie, I kind of find it amazing that, and the example they give here, because they give you all words you should use instead and I was just thinking of us because sometimes when I have Howie correct my stuff for the Herald, he edits it and he'll take a word and he'll say, use this word instead because it, it packs more of a punch. Like I'll say, oh, the press is always bothering Trump. And Howie will say, say harangue. They harangue Trump because it, it's a little bit more effective. And some of these are just less descriptive. Like it said, instead of chicken, use coward. In lieu of rat, you snitch. In lieu of snake, use jerk. And in lieu of pig use repulsive well, and just as a writer use, i was kind of like rat huh. at first reference and use snitch at second reference third reference canary something i've Stool always pigeon. said any rallying cry from the left always adds more syllables to your sentences it's true it's so true and PETA always seems to involve themselves but how we like this one for example ready it says instead of saying someone has sloth like tendencies call them lazy if i was writing an article <laughs> howie and i said the sl- and he's like a sloth. That would be better than saying he's lazy. Yes. If you said he's lazy, I might t- say, Grace, change that to he's like a sloth. And then I would go, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Thanks, Howie. All right. Okay. That's it uh, for this segment. We'll take some more calls when we come back. 844-500-4242. I'm Howie Carr. You're listening to the How. We've got Kevin Frisbee. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm sorry. Go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, this week I remembered and you forgot. <laughs> yeah. Blow it out. Blow them out. Of sparkling clean jewelry. I use mine every week and my jewelry looks amazing. I had no idea how dirty my jewelry was until I started cleaning it with the Gem Spa. I bought one for my mom and for my aunts. Join the clean jewelry revolution. Get yours now. Go to mygemspa.com, use promo code GRACE and save 20%. That's mygemspa.com, promo code GRACE and save 20%. Liberty safe. If you're a gun owner, you know that name because they've worked so hard to earn the title of America's number one safe. And the area's best Liberty Safe dealer is Dependable Lock in Nashua. They have Liberty Safes in stock now. Keep your guns and other valuables locked up in a Liberty Safe. See the experts at Dependable Lock to learn. Hey, Howie. Yes. Also just got a cut of John Kerry saying he, he does not understand the opposition over the canceling of the XL pub pipeline. Are you kidding me? I, I don't kid. That really I'm that really sets up the next hour. I was going to lead with the uh, the the uh, black guy because he, he's fantastic. But this makes it even better. Yeah, there and, you and go. did uh, did Kathy tell you that 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 uh, XL pipeline hour was the best uh, best numbers in a month? Oh no, kidding! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and we did find the rolling rollouts. Oh, good, excellent. How good is the rolling rollouts? Uh, it's not that good. <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting, but he he's, says rolling uh, rollouts. But it, it's so Menino-like, you know? It wasn't called the intelligent Menino-like. unit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> but it's there. Good. 
would address concerns that people have. The list goes on about the jurors. Here at the Howie Car.